Hi guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com and in this week's ukulele lesson, Christopher is going to be teaching you the vintage sounding piece which is called 12th Street Rag. So I got a chance to play through this arrangement and I've got to say first off it's a lot of fun but secondly I think this is going to be perfect for those of you who are looking for a strong rhythmic piece to work on. Now this tune as you heard in the performance has an awesome melody but that melody is embedded within the strumming pattern and that strumming pattern uses quite a few different strumming techniques to really make it pop. So let's take a look at the strumming techniques. Now I've highlighted three of them in red that are used in this song but all four of these techniques that you see were taught in our course that we released last year which is aptly titled Strumming Techniques Beyond the Island Strum. And you can check out that course by clicking this link. I'll also put a link to it in the description box below. If any of these strumming techniques have you scratching your head saying, what is that? Then I'd highly encourage you to check out that course because it teaches you the mechanics behind all of them, as well as gives you quite a few exercises to help get them deeply embedded into your playing repertoire. So this lesson is going to move forward with the assumption that you know how to do them. So be sure to check out that course if you need to learn any of them. Now the other thing I want to talk about with this tune is that there is a section of it that switches fills. So we go from a swung fill to a straight fill. So if you're new to the difference between playing straight eighth notes versus swung eighth notes, I'm going to put a link in the description box below to our lesson that covers the difference between the two. And it gives you a really cool example piece to work on to really get it ingrained as well. So let's talk a little bit about this tune. So in this video, you're going to be learning the first half of the song. If you want to learn the second half of the song, you can do so by clicking this link right here or going to the site rockclass101.com and doing a search for 12th Street Rag. Now also on that page will be the tabs that you can print off and follow along with as a PDF format, as well as the on-screen tab viewer. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a really great asset in getting a tune like this down that much easier. Alright guys, so I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Christopher to teach you how to play this and then I'll see you at the end of the video. Hello friends, this is Christopher Davis Shannon with Rock Class 101 and today I'm going to break down for you one of my favorite show pieces for the uke, the 12th Street Rag. This song is well over 100 years old at this point and was a huge success for people such as Roy Smack and Johnny Marvin back in the day, but still holds some weight today and is played quite frequently not just in uke circles, but also on tenor banjo as well as with Dixieland bands and traditional jazz bands throughout the world. One of the reasons for this is harmonically it's a very simple tune. The vast majority of this song is only two chords and those are C and G7. And over top of this we are playing mostly three notes in the melody. It's a very simple moving line, but due to the syncopation and some of the chord inversions that we have to use, this should be a good challenge for a lot of you, but it's also a great way to start playing swing chord melody style. So let's hop right in and see what this tune is all about. If we look at bar one, our little intro section is harmonically a G7 chord, but we don't really need to worry about that until the last bar. We're only going to be playing individual notes. Now, rhythmically, what we are doing here is generally what the beginning of every John Philip Sousa march sounds like. So the rhythm is going to be one and two and three, rest. One and two and three, rest. So let's look at those first two bars as they are identical to each other. You want to take your second finger and put it on the F sharp on the second fret of your E string. And that's the only note that we actually need to fret for these first two measures. From there, we are going to play our open G string, and then that F sharp on the E string, back to the G string, and then up to the A string, and back to the G string. So you'll see with every other beat we are always returning to the open G string. And we want to remember as there is a rest on beat 4 that we need to stop the sound coming out of our uke. So let me just play bar 1 for you to demonstrate. Rest. Rest. So we'll repeat that twice and then as we move on to bar 3 we have a slightly different rhythm. We're going to have one and and three, four, 
one, which will sound like this. And we'll work on the notes in just one second, but let's get the rhythm first. All right, so what we are doing as we move on to bar three is we're just gonna take that second finger here, and we can move it right up to the G on the third fret of our E string. So we're just moving it one fret up. And you'll see that we're starting on that G, and then we're going to play another G, the same note, but we'll use our high G to play it this time. And this is just borrowing from our Campanella style playing to give us more semblance of sustain on this tiny instrument. So we'll go, we just have our middle finger on the third fret, the G on our E string, and we're going to go E string, G string, E string, A string. And that's going to be an eighth note, a quarter note, an eighth note, a quarter note. So it'll be slow, quick, slow, quick, slow. So it'll be like that. And then we're moving on to a C-sharp diminished seventh chord. But really in this context, what we are doing is just using this as a lead-in to get to our G seventh chord. So what I want you to do is pay close attention to the fingering on the last beat of measure three. The chord will be open one, open one, but we want to use our middle finger on the C string and our ring finger on the A string. And the reason for this is if we look forward to bar four, we are playing a G seventh chord, and this enables us to just slide up and into this chord as opposed to our usual voicing, which would be our first and second fingers, we would have to do this big switch here. So we want to be conscious of these fingerings, especially at faster speeds, so that we make it easier for ourselves and have more efficient movement on the instrument. Let me play bars three and four for you. So this last chord that we're going to in bar four, as we have our G seventh already down, we're changing this to a G seventh sharp five, which is a fancy way of saying that we're raising the fifth or we're taking the D, that is the second fret of our C string, and we're going to make that D sharper one half step higher, so just one fret higher. So we can just reach our pinky around, and we still have fretted our full G seventh chord, but then we are going to reach the pinky around to the third fret of our C string to add a D sharp to the chord. So it'll sound like this. Let me play bars one through four for you, and then we'll all try it together. Now let's try that together. One, two, three, four. So now let's look at the A section, which is really what begins the meat and potatoes of this tune. These first four bars really present to us the melody as well as the basic harmonic structure for a lot of this tune. So once we're comfortable with these first four bars and rhythmically and harmonically what's going on, we'll be able to move through the tune a little bit quicker. So looking at these first four bars of the A section, we have pretty simple chords here. It's just C and G7 as we move on to bar seventh, we'll be changing there. So let's strum very quickly. I just want to look at those first couple bars and just strum them together. So our strum for the most of this is going to be down, up, down, up, down, up, or what we call a shuffle strum. This will be swung eighth notes. So we're not going to worry about the melody right now, just the chords. So we're gonna strum down, up, down, up, on C and G seventh. We'll have eight beats a piece of each. So I'll start this off for you. One, two, three, four. Now G seventh. Good, we're halfway there. Those are the chords. That's all we need for these four bars. Now, if we look at just the tab of the A string, we can see that the melody line repeats itself over and over. There's three, two, open, three, two, open, three, two, open, over and over again. That is our main melody for this tune. I wanna play bars five and six for you very quickly, just so you can hear how this sounds. That's it. Now this should seem rather easy. We're strumming a C major chord and we just have that moving line that I just played for you over top. The reason that this is going to be hard to put together is because we're in 4-4, four, four, so we're thinking in groups of two, really. But this melody 
is groupings of three. So each time that we return to the C or the third fret of our A string, it's going to push the beat back by one eighth note or syncopate it by one eighth note. So while our ear just naturally wants to hear that always landing on the downbeat, we're not going to have that. It's always going to be off the beat. Let me demonstrate for you with bars five and six. So this is exactly what we just did, but strumming through the chords as opposed to just playing individual notes. So just note on beat four of bar six that we're just going to leave everything open and play a C sixth. Let's try bars five and six together. One, two, three, four. Very good. Now we're going to do nearly the same thing, but we're going to do it over a G seventh chord now. So if we put down our G seventh chord, you'll note that our melody is starting again on the third fret on that C. So we have two ways that we can finger this. Either we can use our pinky and just pull it off like this, or we can slide the ring finger like this. Either works just as well. When you get up to speed, you might find that one works better for you. So experiment with both fingerings and see what really works. Now, as we get to this G seventh bar, we have all eighth notes for the first bar of this in bar seven. As we get to bar eight, we'll talk about the rhythm that's happening there in a moment, but I want to get comfortable with the moving melody first. So what we're going to do is we're going to play the melody. It's going three, two, open, three, two, open, three, two, open, and that last one will just let ring out, but we're going to strum it over a G seventh chord, so it'll sound like this. Let's try that together, just bar seven. One, two, three, four. Very good. Now moving on to bar eight, this is where we finally get to strum something different besides just swung eighth notes the entire time. So what we have here is a quarter note, two eighth notes, a triplet, and two eighth notes. So rhythmically what we'll hear is one, two, and triplet, four, and one, two, and triplet, four, and. If we look down the page, you can see just about every fourth bar contains this same exact rhythm. So if you get this once, it's gonna be much easier to get through the rest of the piece. So we're playing this on really a G, um, G9 chord. So it'll be open, two, one, open. We have that A just ringing out as we had in our melody. So the way we're gonna do this, it's gonna be down, down, up, triplet, down, up. So as we execute the triplet, if you're not familiar with this on uke, it's going to be the same pattern as we would do with our down and up strum, but we're just gonna drag the thumb behind. So what do I mean by that? We're going to come down with the first finger, and then the thumb's gonna come down, and then we're just doing our standard up. So we still have this down and up, we're just dragging the thumb behind our one beat. So if we think of just doing that triplet on beat three where it will be placed, we won't worry about the eighth notes quite yet. So it'll sound like this. So it'll be down, down, triplet, down. So it'll be. And then when we can add in the eighth notes going with that, so it'll be down, down, up, triplet, down, up. That will be our strumming pattern and it'll sound like this. all over that same exact chord. We don't have any movement in the left hand. Let me play bars five through eight for you now, and then we'll give it a shot together. Let's try that together. One, two, three, four. Now looking at measure nine, if we look at just the top line of this entire, um, this entire four bar segment we're about to dive into, you'll look and see that it's the identical melody that we played over bars five through eight. So the movements that we are doing with our left hand on the A string are exactly the same as what we just went over, but the chords are reversed. We're now staying on that G seventh chord but we're going to walk it down from there. So what we just played over the C chord is now going to happen over the G seventh, and what we just played over the G seventh chord melodically is going to happen over the C chord. So if we look at bars nine and 10, we're playing that same melody. 
except we're strumming now over a G7. So the movements that we did, 3-2 open, 3-2 open, we already covered really in measure 7. So this should come together fairly quickly for you. Here's what measure 9 sounds like. <laughs> Not too bad. And then as we move on to measure 11, we're going to C, and then you'll see in bar 12, we have the same exact rhythm as we played in measure eight, but we're doing it now over our C sixth chord, our favorite chord on uke, everything open. So let me play measures 11 and 12 for you. You can see how this sounds. So let's try to put that together. I'll play for you starting at bar nine, and then we'll try it together. Now let's try that together. One, two, three, four. Now looking at bar 13, this should look mighty familiar to you. Bars 13 through 16 are identical to bars five through eight. The melody, the harmony, and the rhythm are all exactly the same. We are reintroducing the melody before we bring in some new content. So let's just hop in and try measure 13 together. One, two, three, four. Now at measure 17, we finally get something new harmonically. We don't have a C or a G seventh here. We're going to a D seventh, which is actually the subdominant of our dominant chord in this key. And that's a fancy way of saying that we're using what would be the fifth chord in the key of our fifth chord to get there. So if we think of a G seventh as the five in C, right? C, D, E, F, G. That's why G seventh is our dominant chord. It's always the fifth scale degree in the key of G. G, A, B, C, D seventh would be our dominant chord. So that gives us our strong sense of motion into that G seventh chord. And this is a very common thing that you'll see happen in these earlier tunes. So as we look at this, we'll get to the melody in just one moment, but I wanna go over the chords themselves. So our D seventh chord, we're going to base around our A seventh bar chord shape. So if you're familiar with your A seventh, open one, open, open. We're going to fret that with our middle finger because we need our first finger free. And we're just gonna slide this middle finger on up to the sixth fret and bar across the fifth fret. There's our D seventh chord, right? D seventh, D seventh, D seventh. Now we have to modify this just a little bit due to the melody. We're starting on an E, making this a D ninth chord. So we're gonna strum this twice by just putting down our ring finger on the seventh fret of our A string, which is an E. So it'll be five, six, five, seven. We'll strum that down twice. And then we're going to play our regular D seventh that we started with. So you just lift up the ring finger. You already have the bar down. So the fifth fret's already covered. That's the melody note we need. So it'll be seven, seven, five, five. Everything else remains the same. And then we're moving on in bar 18 to a D sixth chord. Now we were just talking about C six that we were strumming open. So all we have to do is take the C sixth, move it up a whole step or two frets. So we'll just bar over top of our second fret and that's a D sixth chord. So we'll strum through that twice. And then we're going to go to our Hawaiian D seventh chord. And I want you to take a close look at how my left hand moves as I do this. As I go from my D six to my Hawaiian D seventh, which is two open, two open, you'll see that I'm pivoting around my first finger. My first finger barely moves. It's already in position. And this is gonna be important when we get this up to speed that we don't want to be jumping around like this. We want smooth motions between these chords. So let me play bar 17 and 18 for you. We're just going through inversions of a D seventh chord with our melody up top. So it'll sound like this. And then we're going to the G seventh chord that we were talking about. So we'll start out in root position, open two, one, two, and we're just gonna walk this up. So we'll do two strums here. We're gonna put our pinky down to make this our G seven sus four again. So pinky on the third fret of the A string for two beats. 
And then we're going to move up to our third inversion G7 chord, which is a fancy way of saying there's now an F as the lowest note we have in this. So our F will be on the fifth fret of our C string. So we'll have open five, three, five. You think of just sliding this on up and just letting the first finger drop behind it to get to this motion. So do that for two beats. And then what is written on the page is to just use your pinky for beat three to play the seventh fret of your A string and then automatically up a half step to the eighth fret to give us an F. Now for some people, if we look at bar 20, it'll sound like this. That might be too much of a reach for some people, so I want to give you an alternate voicing that you can use here. As we're coming up from this, root position, third inversion, what we can do is actually bar across the seventh fret, open, seven, seven, seven. So that gives us the melody note, and then on the last beat, we can just put down the F on the eighth fret. So it could sound like this, especially if you're playing a tenor, you, this might be a much easier voicing. So you get a very similar sound to what we just did. Let me play from bar 17 for you. Now let's try that together. One, two, three, four. Now as you look at the B section starting at bar 21, you'll note that bars 21 through 28 are identical to the beginning of the A section. These are the same exact eight bars. We have that 3-2 open melody and we have C and G seventh chords. We still have that triplet rhythm on every fourth bar. So let's just dive right in and try this together from bar 21. One, two, three, four. Now here's where we get something different between the A section and the B section. We have a slightly different turnaround to get to the end of the tune. So if we just look forward, the chords aren't too hard at C, C7, F6th, and then we have this diminished chord that we'll talk about in one moment. So we need to address the rhythm that's happening in bar 29. We're playing what's called stop time here, so the rests on beats 2 and 3 are very important. We're going to start on our open position, C major chord, open, 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 three. And we're going to play that for one beat and rest for two. So it'll be one, two, three, four. And then we'll play beat four again. And you'll see that this rhythm's consistent for the next three bars. We call it beats one and beats four. But make sure that you are muting either with your left or right hand on beats two and three so that we have that stark difference and it's not bleeding over into the next beat. So as we come from this C on beat four in bar 30, we're going to play our C seventh bar chord. This is also based off of A7. This is identical to what we did with the D7 on the 5th fret, except we're now barring on the 3rd fret. 3, 4, 3, 3. And then we'll play that again on beat 4. And then we're going to play an F6 chord, which is what we really like. Our 6th chords are just barring straight across. So this will be a bar across on the 5th fret of your uke for an F6. So let me play bars 29 through 31 for you, and then we'll address 32 as there's some new material in there in just one second. So it'll sound like this. Now we stop on that F6 chord on beat 4 in measure 31. And if we look at bar 32, we're starting on a C diminished 7th chord. This can be called really any note in the chord. We can call it that diminished chord, but we'll, we'll work with it as a movable C diminished seventh chord. So what this will be, we're on our F sixth. If you make this your D seventh chord by just putting down the middle finger on the sixth fret of your C string on that F sharp, we played this chord earlier. To make it the C diminished, all we're going to do is add the E flat or the sixth fret of our A string. This chord right here. Now the great part about this is that every few frets, these repeat. So we're going to use this voicing throughout the tune. So we're going to start out for the first two beats, we're going to play this voicing right here, five, six, five, six, and then we're gonna drop it down. Same voicing, but we're just moving it down to two, three, two, three. So we're moving three frets. 
same exact grouping of notes but in a different order. So our four beats of measure 32 will sound like this. So once you get comfortable with moving that chord around, then we can throw in the rhythm. So we're starting on a triplet here. So we had our triple stroke, down, down, up, and then we have an extra down on beat two, another triplet, and then four. So it will be clapped like this. Two, three, four, triplet two, triplet four. Let's try clapping that together. One, two, three, four, triplet two, triplet four. And then we can apply it to the uke and it'll sound like this. So this might take a little bit to get used to, to do those two triplets in one measure. It's hard to get them to continue on like that. So take your time with this measure. It's one of the harder ones in the piece. Let me play starting at bar 29 for you. One, two, three, four. Now let's try that four bar section together. One, two, three, four. And now we've gotten to the last four bars of the tune. So harmonically, these are things that we've already done. We have C major, D seventh, G seventh, C, G seventh, C. Nice and easy chord. So let's look at the moving pattern that's going on over top of this on the A string and see if we need to address any new voicings. So as we look at measure 33, we're starting out our root position C major chord, open, open, open three. So this is just our down up strum. We have straight eighth notes this entire time. So we're gonna go three and then we're gonna Lift up, so we'll have open on B2, back to three, and then we'll slide that up to the fifth fret. So let me play bar 33 for you. So it's going to be three, open, three, five. And then we're going to the D9 chord that we played earlier. Five, six, five, seven. We have that E on top. Strum down twice on that. Now instead of dropping down to the D seventh as we did earlier in the tune on the fifth fret, we are playing this D in the melody if you look at your music in measure um, 34, but we're doing it over a G seventh now. So what we're going to use is play that G seventh in third inversion. Open, five, three, five. And that's gonna give us the same melody note with a slightly different harmony over top. So it'll sound like this. All right, let me play bars three, 33 and 34 for you. And again, when we're moving from this D9 to this G7 chord, I want you to think really strongly about what the middle finger is doing, because this is staying on the C string. So this is our pivot point to get to the next chord is gonna make this transition a lot easier than thinking of two totally divergent chord shapes. They really do have similarities with each other. Look at bar 35, you see the first two beats are identical to what we just did in 33. We're just strumming a C major chord three and then open for a C sixth. And then on beat three, we have our triple stroke over a G seventh. So 34, 35, nothing really too new here. And then we stop on a C and we'll mute for that measure and then we'll play our G7 so that we can lead in to the next section of the tune or we can start back at the top and repeat this. Let me play starting at bar 33 for you and then we'll try it together. One, two, three, four. So now we've gotten through the first section of this tune, it's time to hop over to the next section which gives us a bunch of variations over this simplistic melody. Hi guys, so I hope you enjoyed learning the first half of this tune. I'm always a big fan of these vintage sounding pieces. They have such cool melodies and this one 
especially is a great study for working on rhythm technique. Now, if you want to watch the part two lesson where we cover the second half of the song, you can do so by clicking this link right here or going to the site rockclass101.com and doing a search for 12th Street Rack. Now, also on that page is the tabs that you can print off and keep for your records, as well as that really cool interactive tab player. So you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars, loop sections, slow it down, all that fun jazz, just a great tool for tackling this song that much easier. And last but not least, I will put a link in the description box below to the strumming course, so if any of those strumming techniques were new for you, definitely check out that course. That course also has a capstone performance piece that is another vintage sounding tune, which is called Five Foot Two, Eyes of Blue. Really, really cool sounding tune as well. So guys, again, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the part two one. Take care.